Well, hello and welcome to another edition of TSL Talk. It's the uh, second half of the split round and there's a couple of real exciting games on this weekend. And Today we're joined by uh, Launceston's Adrian Finch, uh, he's based down in Hobart, so Adrian, thanks for joining us. No worries, thank you. Uh, I guess we'll start just with yourself, you obviously you teach at Hutchins, um, what's it like sort of obviously travelling every weekend up to play and what do you sort of do during the week to keep yourself in touch? Yeah, uh, well I've been doing that for, this is my fifth season now, um, I had last year off but played the four before that um, up with Launceston, so I think it's yeah five travelling now, which is... Um, it wasn't the plan originally, it was just when I moved down to Hobart to, um, to work down here, obviously I wanted to, to um, establish myself at a football club down here, but um, just a bit of loyalty and, and mates that we've uh, made up there, so stuck with them and we, we managed to win one premiership, then obviously you stay, stay around again, so, and then two and then three, so it's, um, it's been a bit, bit like that. So Then last year I unfortunately had my year off uh, injured, so... Um, so it was a bit hard to, to commit to a club down here if I was going to be carrying injuries and wasn't sure where I was going to be sitting this year. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's okay. It, it's it, the, the travel up and down the highway gets a bit tedious, but yeah, you get you get used to it. So car starts to drive itself after a while. <laughs> do, do you train with a club down here during the week? Do you train with Hutchins or someone like that? At, at, the, at the moment, I've been tra uh, training with Hutchins. Yeah, the school boys there have been um, have, have won their premiership down here, so I, I've got got a bit of training down there and structured their training sessions during the pre-season and, and then joined in through, throughout the season. So and apart from that, that seems to be all right because you get a lot of touches on the ball and then apart from that, just been spending a lot of time managing the body now um, and, uh, and also just, just, I suppose, doing, working on my own strength and conditioning and, and, uh, and fitness work apart from that. So. I guess the big game this week is obviously Launceston versus Clarence. It's one versus two. Um, I guess some people are probably thinking it might be a bit of a preview to the grand final. I guess the guys, no doubt, are gearing up for another challenge. Yeah, we're we're very excited. Like we we had a tough game last week against Burnie, um, which which up there in the in their conditions and, and their uh, their ground, which they're good at. We got a, we got a win, so we, we keep that the winning streak going at the moment. But um, it gives us a, a lot of confidence going into this week. Obviously, now we've got a, obviously the biggest job of the season coming up this week. But we're we're very we're very excited about the challenge, and know that it's yeah it's not going to be an easy contest. But hopefully, we can. We can make it a four quarter contest, which we meant we failed to do in the past. So you played them in round six, and I think you're five goals up at quarter time, and end up getting outscored by nearly a hundred points over the last three quarters. Sort of what went wrong after that first break? Yeah, oh, everything basically. The wheels fell off at quarter time. Um, after quarter time, I was I was actually watching the game up in the stands for that for that one um, when I was out injured. So I, I got a good look good look at the game and where we went right, where we went wrong. Everything flowed. You know, everything went our way. The, the decisions, the ball, you know, the bounced our way, and, and we and we worked hard. We ran for each other, and and I reckon everything stopped. We had no run to receives. We had no uh, run out of the back line, um, and then and then Clarence, you know, chipped away in that quarter, um, early in that quarter, and then once they get their confidence up, they're 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 the toughest side, obviously, in the competition when they're when they're confident when they're running. So. That's where we went. That's why I reckon that's where we went wrong. Just fell apart. So. You've won eight on the trot since then, which is only surpassed, obviously, by Clarence, who are undefeated. What sort of change in the moment? I was speaking to a couple of people during the week. They think some undisciplined acts sort of set in. You think that's sort of all stamped out now, and you're just concentrating on the footy? Yeah, I think so. We learned a lot from that last Clarence game. Uh, we had, I think it would have been 14, 15, 50 metre free kicks against us. Or there was, or there was in the game. There was, it was, and Clarence had their fair share of fifties, which was. Um, which is also a bit disappointing um, for the flow of the game, but it was it was down to undisciplined acts, you know. Um, so we, we really made that our focus point was that from now on we'll you know we'll pull our heads in and make sure that we we play for each other and don't let each other down in that regard. So that's made that's been a, that's been a fair turning point in terms of yeah in terms of the way we've we've approached our game. So. Scott Stevens really sort of has elevated his game to another level since in that winning streak. Is anybody else who stepped up? Do you think in your, in your side to really help you uh, to move along? Yes, no. Scott's definitely definitely um, played a, played a very strong role in our side, um, and you can rely on him throughout the game. And I think the main the main thing for me would be um, that our junior boys, our young boys that have come into the side, um, you know, <clears throat> so a lot of unfamiliar faces have really stepped up and and and. Their confidence has, has grown week by week, and now now they've you know they've joined us and playing at the at the same level as the rest of us. We've got we've got a fair mix of senior boys that have been around for for premiership um, seasons in the NTFL, but for, for those junior boys to now step up 
with us. Um, it, it's I think that's been our, our main shift in our form. I reckon that'd be that'd be about it. Um, yeah, pinpointing individual players. I, don't, I think everyone's everyone's lifted really. So. And on the Clarence point, what, what's going to be sort of the key to the rematch on Saturday? Well, as as everyone says every week, it's it's being able to stay with them for four quarters and, and not letting you know letting yourself down, especially in that last quarter, which Clarence is very strong at. Um, regardless, if you're in front in that in that in that last quarter, I think that's that's going to be that's going to be the bit where you've really got to knuckle down and, and stay on top of it. Um, I'd, I'd say just just yeah, obviously a four quarter effort, but yeah. I'd, I'd, It'll it'll be an interesting game. I think the, the conditions are going to be dry, so the ball will be the ball will be zipping around pretty quickly, um, and uh, it, matching them with skill is going to be very important because they are the, the most skillful side in the state at the moment. So, yes, Cameron Thurley wasn't named last night. I guess still out with that knee injury. Is there anybody else you, you sort of might look to target now? I guess you know they're obviously missing him and Brett Gapen from last time you did face them. Yeah, well, both of those guys have been playing up forward, and I think um, I think looking at looking at form. Um, in, in recent weeks, with Standen up forward, um, kicking a lot of goals, and he's kicked a few big bags this season. Um, I think that'll be that'll be a, a key matchup for us. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say we should be we should be right to match them around the field. We, we're just going to have to we have to wait and see what it's who lines up if they're still out, um, and if there are other in, any other injuries they're taking into the game. I think. They've got a, they've got a pretty good list to choose from. I think we're in the same boat. We've got a, we've got a full list to choose from. So it's going to be a great showdown this weekend. Hopefully, you know, hopefully it can be a, a, a really close game. And the other two matches on are obviously are, are very important as well. You've got North Launceston who are currently in sixth place, but have lost I think three in a row against North Hobart who are fourth. Uh, who do you think might win that one at Aurora Stadium? Jeez, uh, a tough one. Um, I think they're 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 very. I think they're similar sides. Um, the way they go about their game, uh, I think North Launceston really need this one to, to stay in, in touch with it. Um, so I don't know. I reckon I reckon it's it's probably a, a, a really important one for them. I reckon I'd probably back them this week um, to, to do the job and, and keep their keep their season in touch. Really, I guess they seem a bit up and down. They were the same last season as well. I know it's last week, last round against uh, Lauderdale. Crawford kicked seven, but still didn't get a mention. I guess what do you, surprising to see them so fluctuating with their form. They've got they've got a lot of good on ballers, um, and they really drive it out of the middle well um, and, and feed it in quick. So whether Crawford kicks seven and, and that's that's as many marks and kicks as he got for the game, that that could be one of the, the factors. Not not quite sure. I haven't got any any news on that game and how it went, but I'd, I'd say that their on ballers are doing a really good job for them through the middle when they're when they're up and playing well. So. That'd be that'd be probably one of the things that they'd look at. So, and the final game is Hobart versus Lauderdale. They've seemed to have built up a bit of a rivalry. Probably won't affect the, the top six, but still a, a tight encounter. Probably expected. Yeah, definitely. Those those two sides are, are obviously uh, Hobart's really really fighting for their season, and they've been pretty unlucky this year with with a lot of their games. They've they've lost a lot of close games, um, and and Lauderdale obviously uh, they're they're a pretty strong side. And if you if you you're off guard, they'll they'll um they'll put you away and they'll they'll yeah really push you right through the game. So we'll just yeah be interesting tussle between those two clubs. But I, I don't know who I'd predict out of the two. I don't know. <laughs> Tough one. Oh, excellent. Well, thanks for your time, Adrian. No worries. Get some uh, different face on the uh, on the camera. And thanks again for joining us at TSL Talk. And remember, for all your news, previews, and results, head get your copy of the Mercury or head to the Mercury online.